If you use Excel password protection, you'll be amazed at how easy it is to remove them. In this video, I'm going to cover the different types of password protection available in Excel and how to remove them if you happen to have forgotten your password. I'll also show you which is the most secure way to protect your data. Now, before we get started, I trust that you will use these techniques for good and not evil. Make sure you're only cracking passwords for your own files. The first type of password we can apply is at the sheet level and we do this via the review tab and then protect sheet. This enables you to protect one sheet at a time in the workbook, preventing users from entering data in specific cells, moving objects, etc. I'm going to enter a password here, but notice it is optional and I need to re-enter it. Now, if you happen to have forgotten this password, it is super easy to remove it. And with that protection in place, if I try and edit a cell or enter something in a cell that's protected, I get an error. Now, the first thing you'll want to note is which sheet in the file contains the password protection. And notice there are three sheets in this file. The second one is called sales data, and that's the one that I've protected. Now, if you've rearranged the sheets in your file after inserting them, the numbers for the sheets won't be in the same order as your tabs. So in that case, to find the sheet number, right click on any of the sheets and go into view code. This opens the VB editor and you can see at the top, I've got the actual sheet numbers and their corresponding sheet tab names. So make a note of the sheet number that you've protected. We'll close the VB editor and we'll close the Excel file. And I'll just go into my browser. This is the file that has the password protection at the sheet level. I'm going to make a copy. So holding control, I'm just going to left click and drag. And I'm just going to work in the copy just in case I make a mistake. Here I want to change the file extension. If you can't see the file extension .xlsx, go to the view tab and make sure file name extensions is checked. To change the sheet name, you can right click and choose rename or use the keyboard shortcut F2. And then all we need to do is make this a zip file, press enter. It gives me a warning. Yes, I'm sure I want to change it. That's fine. Now it's a zip file. I can drill down on the folders and I want to go into the Excel folder and then into worksheets. And here is my XML file for sheet number two. In another browser window, I'm just going to make a copy of the XML file, left click and drag it across. And that's going to enable me to edit it. To edit this XML file, you can open it in Notepad or any text editor. I have Notepad++ installed, so that's my default. And this is basically the code for that sheet. I'm going to Control F because what I want to do is find the text sheet protection. And you can see it there behind. Let's close this down. This is the code that relates to the password protection for the sheet. And what I want to do is select all of it between the less than and greater than tags and simply press the delete key to delete it. Let's save this XML file, close notepad. And all I need to do now is copy this back to my zip folder, replacing the one that's there. So that copied across, I'm going to go back up to the file level. There's my zip file. All I need to do is F2, rename this XLSX again. Yes, I'm sure I want to change it. Now it's an Excel file. Open it up and the password protection will be gone. Let's check on the review tab. Protect sheet is no longer grayed out or on protect sheet. And if I try and type something in, I can edit the cells. So you can see sheet protection at this level is not very secure. Let's take a look at workbook protection. Workbook protection is also applied via the review tab and then protect workbook. It enables you to protect the structure of the workbook and it prevents sheets being added or removed, hidden and unhidden and that type of thing. I can enter a password here. It is optional, but I'm going to enter one. And if I now try and right click, you can see I can't insert, delete, rename, move or copy any sheets. Now the process for unprotecting a workbook is similar to unprotecting worksheets. So let's close the file and I'll go into my browser. We'll take a copy of the file. This is the one that has my workbook protection. 
and we're going to rename it dot zip. Yes, I want to change it. And then we're going to drill down into Excel until we find the workbook dot XML. And I'm just going to make a copy of this into another folder so that I can open it in my text editor. So this is the underlying code for the workbook. I'm going to control F and here I want to find workbook protection. You can see it's highlighted the code behind. Again, I want to select everything between the opening and closing greater than and less than tags and delete it, save the file, close the editor, and then copy it back across to the zip, replacing the one that's there. And then let's go back and we're going to rename this back to .xlsx. Yes, I'm sure I want to change it. Let's open it up. And you'll notice on the review tab, I can protect the workbook, which means the protection must be removed. Let's test it out. I can right click and you can see I can insert, delete, rename, move and copy, etc. Like sheet protection, workbook protection is not terribly secure. All right, let's move on and we'll look at read only protection. Read only protection is set up when you save the file. So I'm going to F12 to file save as this file. And then under tools, general options, I can set a password to open and I can set a password to modify. So we're going to look at password to modify first. So I'm going to enter a password here. This is going to force the user to open the workbook as read only unless they know the password. So I'm going to save that and replace the existing file. Let's close it down. And then we'll look at opening this type of protective file. So double click to open it. And I'm presented with a dialog box where I have to enter a password for write access, or I can open as read only. If I open the file in read only mode, I can go into the file menu and save as a copy without the password. Alternatively, I can remove the password. To remove password protection, I'll make a copy of the file, holding down control, left clicking and dragging, and we'll F2 to edit and rename this zip. Yes, I want to change it. And let's open the folders again in Excel. And then this is the workbook file I want. Let's copy it across out of the zip and double click to open it in my text editor. Now here I'm looking for file sharing. There it is selected there. And I want everything between the opening and closing tags and I simply press delete and save it, close it down and copy it back across, replacing the one that's there. Let's rename this .xlsx back to its original format. And let's open this file and you'll see I'm not prompted to enter a password. It just opens. Now, if your file is password protected and there's no option to open it in read only mode, for example, you get this dialog box and you can see there's no read only button and you've forgotten your password. Unfortunately, you cannot use any of the techniques we've just tried. Let's take a look at what happens if you do try to use these techniques. So let's make a copy and I'm going to F2 to edit it into a zip. Yes, I want to change it. And if you try and open this type of file, you get this error. Password protection at the file level, that is when you go File, Save As, and Tools, General Options, and you enter a password here, is the most secure way to protect your data. However, it's still not 100% secure. You can purchase third-party apps to unlock Excel files. Just be sure you're being ethical and only unlocking your own files. Unfortunately, I've never needed to remove a password at this level, so I don't have any first-hand experiences of apps that I can recommend. So you have to weigh out whether it's worth your time and money to pay for a service to hack into a file that you've forgotten the password for, or whether you're better off just recreating that file altogether. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.